Hare Krishna. Welcome, dear devotees. Thank you so much for joining us today on the GBC SPT platform. Um, the GBC SPT team is constantly discussing and thinking about how we can improve and um, do more for our devotional community. So just meditating on the upcoming Gita Jayanti, uh, we all decided that every temple and every devotee takes an opportunity to read Bhagavad Gita. So why not facilitate their offerings to Krishna and uh, help the devotees recite to the best of their abilities? So we, it's our great honor and privilege to welcome Bhakta Vijay from Hare Krishna Vijay Prabhu. Hare Krishna Govinda Prabhu Mataji. Please accept my humble obeisances. Please accept my humble obeisances. I am grateful and honored to be here. Thank you so much for joining us on the GBC SPT platform. And for the devotees that don't know Vijay Prabhu, Vijay Prabhu is a software engineer by profession, but a spiritual and Sanskrit enthusiast at heart. So he is dedicating a lot of time in learning, <clears throat> excuse me, Sanskrit very systematically, and now also sharing it with many, many devotees. So we're very grateful that you have uh, agreed to help the devotees learn Sanskrit pronunciation with taking Bhagavad Gita verses so they can recite during the, this upcoming Gita Jayanti. Uh, Vijay Prabhu has very kindly agreed to take questions as well. So we're going to take questions at the one hour mark and then towards the end of the session. This is probably going to run into a two hour session. So as and when your questions come up, please post them in the chat and we will take them at the one hour mark and then towards the end. Um, also, this video will be available for later view on our Facebook and YouTube channel. So feel free to feel free to share with your family, friends, devotee communities, whoever you think can benefit from this offering. So without further ado, Vijay Prabhu, please I request you to take us into this journey, learning Sanskrit pronunciation. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Govinda Prem Mataji and uh, GBC SPT team for uh, giving me an opportunity to share uh, this uh, pr Sanskrit pronunciation through Bhagavad Gita course. And I am very grateful and honored to be here. And uh, uh, let's begin the course. Before, let me start with the Mangalacharan prayers. Namo Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale Srimade Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nidinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirmishesha Sumyavadi Paschatya Deshatarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadatara Shri Vasadi Gauravakta Vinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Okay Hare Krishna well, I welcome you all for this course My name is Vijay Somasundaram uh, so I have a screen on my side, so I have my notes there, and I'm also watching the comments that's uh, coming up. So I'll be looking at time to time on the side. So don't think I'll be looking somewhere else and got distracted. Okay. Okay, so as soon as when we hear about the Sanskrit pronunciation, the first thing that uh, comes to our mind is, do we even really need to learn uh, the correct pronunciation, right? So there is one example here from Chaitanya Bhagavad. Just to give you a background of this verse that I have put on the uh, presentation. So uh, 
in Ishwar, uh, in Navadip, uh, Ishwarapuri, who is the guru of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he came on time, and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was playing the role of a scholarly uh, grammar uh, teacher. And at that time, Ishwarapuri was there, and uh, because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is the supreme personality of Godhead, Ishwarapuri was attracted to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu naturally. So, and Ishwar Puri was also aware of, of the fact that Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was a, a Sanskrit grammarian and he's very expert in that. So, he was writing a work at that time. So, he asked Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to uh, go through it and then proofread and then fix errors, any errors he has left out in that work. So, at that point, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu uh, recites this verse Murko Vadati Vishnaya. Dhiro Vadati Vushnave Ubhayostu Samam Punyam Bhavagrahi Janardana. So he says that uh, first he expressed uh, to Ishwarapuri that how can I, uh, a normal person, can correct the work of a devotee of Lord Krishna? Uh, Ishwarapuri was, you know, he's playing the role of a uh, uh, you know, a guru for many of the people there out there. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was saying that, you know, whatever you are writing in that work is going to be fully perfect. There is going no, not going to be any mistake. And then he uh, recited this verse. So this verse, it says, Murkha Vadati Vishnaya. Murkha. Murkha means uh, one who is ignorant. Ignorant of the Sanskrit grammar uh, rules uh, and he doesn't know the nuances of it. So he says, Vadati Vishnaya. So when you are offering something to uh, uh, somebody in Sanskrit, you have to use uh, a suffix. You have to attach the suffix to the name. For example, if I am offering something to Krishna, I have to say Krishnaya. If I have to offer obeisances to Krishna, I would be saying Krishnaya Namaha. Right? But if I have to say that to Vishnu, I cannot say Vishnaya. I have to say Vishnu Ve. Uh, if I have to say to Guru, I cannot say Guraya. I have to say Gura Ve, like that. And if I and you would have heard of this famous uh, uh, Tulsi prayers, which we daily recite when we are offering to Tulsi, we Vrindaya. So it's Vrinda Vrindaya. So you are offering uh, something to Tulsi Devi, the obeisances. So here he says, Murkha Vadati Vishnaya. So the person who is not so much uh, knowledgeable of Sanskrit, he would say Vishnaya. Uh, dhiro Vadati Vishnave. But the Dhira, who is sober or learned person in Sanskrit, he would say Vishnave. That's the right form. Vishnaya is not the correct form. Vishnave Namaha. That's the correct form. But what Chaitanya Mahaprabhu says is, Ubhayostu Samam Punyam. Both of them get the same result. There is no difference between the result uh, both of these people get. Why? Bhavagrahi Janardana. So the Janardana or Krishna, he sees the bhava, the bhakti in the heart of the person, not how he pronounces or how uh, he recites or uh, how much knowledgeable he is of Sanskrit. Right. So this is the verse that he is quoting to uh, Ishwara Puri at that point. Which I, uh, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was explaining why he is reluctant to correct uh, whatever there in that work of Ishwara Puri. Now, um, there is also another story um, of uh, illiterate Brahmana. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was uh, taking the uh, South India tour, he went to Srirangam. So in Srirangam, there was an illiterate Brahmana who uh, was reciting Gita every day in front of uh, and when he was reciting Gita, people around him, they were laughing at him because his Gita pronunciation was not very good. Uh, it's it's uh, mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita as Ashuddha. It's not uh, good. So because of that, people were simply laughing at him. Still, he was going on reciting. And he felt, when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu looked at his face, he felt very happy about it. That, you know, oh, I'm reciting it uh, Nicely, as if the Brahmana was, you know, looking as if he is reciting very nicely or something like that. So, 
uh, not only that, he was also exhibiting so many symptoms in his body. He was tears were flowing from his eyes when he was reciting the Gita, and his hairs were standing on its end, and all these ecstatic symptoms which we study in Bhakti uh, Rasamur uh, the Sindhu, they were all manifesting in his body. Uh, so Chaitanya Mahaprabhu went to him and then he was asking, Oh Brahmana, uh, why are you so happy? What are you reciting there in that uh, Bhagavad Gita that makes you feel so happy? Then that illiterate Brahmana, he says that, I don't know uh, the meaning of the verses I'm reading in Bhagavad Gita, nor I, don't, nor I know the good pronunciation of these verses. But whenever I read it, I just see that the bluish, attractive Krishna is sitting on the chariot holding the uh, ropes of the horses and he was giving good instructions upadesha to arjuna this is the bhagavad gita scene so when i look at it i just feel so much ecstatic and whenever i recite the bhagavad gita i see uh, this picture in my mind and i am reciting bhagavad gita because of the order of my guru so when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu heard this, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu mentioned, you are an adhikari for Bhagavad Gita. You are an expert. You are an authority for Bhagavad Gita. Mahaprabhu has declared uh, uh, the illiterate Brahmana as an adhikari for Bhagavad Gita, who was not able to pronounce it correctly. Not only that, he wasn't even understanding the verses, the meaning of the verses he was uh, reading there. But Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has named himself, uh, him as the authority of Bhagavad Gita. So now, then why do we need to care to learn correct pronunciation? Because the Lord sees the bhava of the person. Right? There is another story. There is on the other side of the coin, which um, this verse is quoted in Panini Shiksha. Vishwanatha Chak Chakravati Thakur also quotes this verse uh, in Bhagavatam, 6th Canto, ninth chapter. So the verse goes like this. Mantro hina swarato varnato va mitya prayukto natam martam aha savag vajro yajamanam hinasti yatendra shatru swarato paradhat. So, what it says is mantra hina, mantraha hinaha. So, the mantra is not effective if there is a fault in swara or varna. If there is a problem in the swara of the mantra or varana of the mantra. So what is a swara? In Vedic chanting, when you are reciting a mantra, you have to have the uh, swara also. In, in, when we are reciting Bhagavad Gita or any of the Puranas, we are the Smriti Shastras, we don't need to worry about the swaras. But for Vedas, you have this intonation. It's called uh, Udata, Anudata, Swarita. So you have three intonation. Just like in modern days, uh, you have the Chinese language. When they speak, uh, they see they go up and down uh, different intonations. They do that. So it was there in Vedic Sanskrit as well. So when they recite the Vedic mantras, they would be using that tone. If you don't use the correct tone, then that's uh, defective uh, Vedic chanting. And uh, that's what here is mentioned. If there is a problem, uh, in the swara or the varna or any of the alphabets you are pronouncing there, if you make a mistake, uh, then that mantra is said in the second line of the verse, mithya. Mithya means useless or false. So fruitless, right? Mithya prayukta natam It doesn't give the result it is supposed to give. Right? The mantra doesn't give. And then the third line says, saha vag vajraha. So I'm splitting out the sandhi. Uh, that's why I'm saying saha instead of sa in the verse. Saha vag vajraha. So it says it is a thunder of made of words. It's a thunderbolt made of words. And then it says yajamanam hinasti. It kills the performer of the sacrifice. It doesn't only stop giving the result. It also kills the performer of the sacrifice. And then the fourth line says, Yatha Indra Shatruhu. Just as uh, the story happened with Indra Shatru. Indra Shatru, we will see what is that. Swarataha Aparadha Aparadhat. 
So in the story of the Indra Shatru, there was a problem in the Swara. As I mentioned, it's the tone. Uh, now, what is that uh, Indra Shatru story? So we are all familiar with that story. It's the story of Vrutrasura. Uh, when Twashta, uh, his, uh, his brother was killed by Larindra, so Twashta got uh, uh, angry about it. So he wanted to take a revenge of that. And uh, so he performed, he conducted a sacrifice. And then, uh, sorry for his son. Uh, so he conducted a sacrifice. And in that sacrifice, he was mentioned, he was mentioning this verse. Let me just open this verse. We can be through it. So it's in Hagavatam, sixth canto, ninth chapter, ninth verse. Okay. The verse goes like this. Hataputras tatas kvashtha juhavendraya shatrave indra shatro vivardhasva ma chiran jagi vidvisham. So what it says is, after Vishwarupa was killed, his father kvashtha uh, performed ritualistic ceremonies to kill Indra. He offered oblations into the sacrificial fire saying, O oh, enemy of Indra, flourish to kill your enemy without delay. So here is the word Indra Shatro Vivardas Vivardaswa. It says, Oh, the enemy of Indra, rise up. It says. But you see, there is a dash here. This dash indicates this is a compound word in Sanskrit, Indra Shatruhu. And when you are calling out to Indra Shatruhu, it becomes Indra Shatro. Uh, so um but he has used a wrong intonation. And because he, had, uh, he has used a wrong intonation, the meaning of this word has changed. So this is a compound word. It has it can be in Sanskrit interpreted in two different ways. One is the Tatvurasa Shamasa, which means Indrasya Shatruhu, the enemy of Indra or the killer of Indra. Oh, killer of Indra, raise up. That's what uh, he's actually saying. Let your power be power increase. That's what he was uh, saying. But there is also another meaning. Indraha Shatru Yasya Saha. Uh, one whose killer is Indra. The same word can mean that also. That means one who will be killed by Indra or one who kills Indra. Two meanings are there for the same word. Right? So depending on where you use the tone the meaning of the word can change. And that's what it has happened. He has wrongly used the tone. And instead, of a, instead of a person who would become the killer of Indra, a person has ar uh, arisen from the fire idea who would be killed by Indra. It's completely changed. Right? So this is what uh, this verse is saying, that because of a wrong pronunciation, uh, disaster has happened. Now... Um, this seems to be completely contradicting with, with what we saw previously. The Lord sees the heart. But here, his intention was to uh, bring up the uh, killer of Indra from the fire agya. But completely opposite has happened. His intention did not work there. The pronunciation mattered a lot. So the difference is there because this is a Vedic sacrifice. Vedic sacrifice is more like uh, you are setting up a nuclear uh, bomb or you are sending a rocket. It has to be perfect. Your intention does not matter there. What matters is how you are doing it, how perfectly you are doing it. If you perfectly do whatever your intention is, doesn't matter. The sacrifice will give its result. But if you don't do it perfectly, if you do any mistakes, it can just backfire. Right? So this is with the Vedic sacrifices and the Vedas in general. But with uh, the Puranas, are when we are worshiping the Lord, when we are offering uh, prayers to the Lord, this is this does not apply, because there is another person who is uh, whom we are connected to in love, and when we are doing that, uh, if the intention matters, not how perfectly you are doing it, but what is your intention? Is your intention pure, or is your intention impure? Based on that, uh, you get the result.
So that's the difference you have. But still, um, because Krishna has said that he's a bhavagrahi, should we just go ahead and pronounce everything wrongly? No, just like in Krishna, in Bhagavad Gita, he says, Patram Pushpam Palantoyam, uh, you offer me flower, fruit, water, a leaf uh, with bhakti, and then I will accept it. So he just asks for only four things, right? Uh, but are we just offering only four things to Krishna every day? No, we cook with nice varieties. We even cook pizza or, you know, very nicely rich decorated food uh, to Krishna to offer him and to please him, right? So similarly, when the pronunciation, though he only sees the bhava, we have to put our effort without laziness to correctly pronounce it as far as possible. In the modern day, you know, we know how to use a smartphone and everything, and how to use a laptop, how to go to YouTube and find out things, you know. So we all, you know, most of us have the capability of pronouncing it correctly with a little effort. So we can do this as an offering to Krishna to please him, right? When you are reciting the words of Krishna in Bhagavad Gita, or when you are uh, reciting the past tense of Krishna, you know you can keep this point in your mind that you want to pronounce it correctly as much as possible. And uh, just as when when a baby, small baby, uh, is born and then it started speaking, if it calls out to the dad, dad instead of saying dad, it says da do. You know, the father will be happy to see that. Oh, the child wants to reach out to me. He is seeing the intention of the person, right? But when the baby grows up uh, to a teenager and still he says dadu instead of saying dad, right? The father will be concerned over that, right? So similarly, in the beginning, you know, we are focusing more on uh, developing our own self. But uh, we should also focus on how to serve Krishna nicely later on. And uh, and also this uh, correct uh, pronunciation of Sanskrit helps you in uh, preaching. People like authenticity. So when you correctly pronounce uh, the Sanskrit verses, people appreciate that this guy is. And then this guy is something that he is he is correctly saying things, and he he has something good to say about. Just as Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri Chakur. Uh, when he wants to put a person in public kirtana to attract the public, so he would select a person who has nice musical ability and he would put the person uh, to perform the kirtana. But for his personal uh, hearing, he would ask other disciple who has uh, nice developed bhakti in his heart, he would ask him to sing, though he may not have the uh, uh, correct musical sense about how to sing it nicely. For his personal uh, hearing, he would ask this disciple, but for public, he wouldn't put the same disciple. He would put the person who has nice musical ability because, you know, the public sees the external factors and they get attracted by it as well. So when we do the correct pronunciation of Sanskrit, we get this uh, part as well. Um, yes, so there is one more point. Okay, so this is a famous verse, and many people may know this already. It goes like this: Yadyapi bahuna dhiše tathapi patta putra vyakaranam swajana swajano ma bhud sakalam shakalam sakrit shakrit. Okay, so he says that yadyapi bahuna bahu na adhiše. Even if you, the, this is a father talking to a son. So the father is saying to the son, even if you don't study so much, yet happy, bahuna na adishe. Even if you master uh, so much, even if you don't master so much, right? Says tathapi patha putra vyakaranam. At least study the vyakaranam, right? The Sanskrit grammar. Why? He says swajana. So you will know the difference between these words. Is the, is the, the third line and fourth line. There is a pair of verses, a pair of words we are seeing. Swajana, Shwajana. So Swajana means relatives. And Shwajana means a group of dogs, right? So instead of calling to our relatives 
or when you are reading uh, past times of Krishna, there is the word Swajana is coming. And then instead of saying Swajana, you are saying Shwajana. Then it completely changes the meaning. Instead of relatives, it becomes a group of dogs. Right? We don't want to do that mistake. Right? And then the next pair of words is Sakalam, Shakalam. Sakalam means everything. Shakalam means a part. It's the complete opposite. Sakalam means everything. I want everything. Shakalam, if you say, I want only a part, part of it, right? This is the same word, slight difference. And the third one is Sakrit, Shakrit. Sakrit means that along with this person, you go. So it's along, together, right? That's the meaning. Shakrit means uh, this thesis, toilet, right? So a completely different meaning. You want to say that, you know, you go along with him, but then instead of that, you are saying, take the feces or whatever it is, right? So, um, I mean, though he says that you need to study the Vyakaranam, at least, you know, if you manage to uh, pronounce it correctly, you will differentiate these words. Instead of saying uh, Shwajana, you will say Swajana correctly, wherever it has to be used. So, uh, so we don't become a laughing stock in front of others who know Sanskrit making this uh, differences in the pronunciation. So uh, just to give a background of uh, pronunciation in, in general. So the pronunciation of the Sanskrit syllables come from a Vedanga called Shiksha. So the famous of well, that is uh, Panini or Shiksha. It was written by, said to be written by the brother of Panini, according to the uh, according to the vision of Panini, he has written that. And uh, in Harinama Murata Vyakaranam, uh, which is a grammar that was written by Jiva Goswami himself, uh, using Krishna's names everywhere, he has written an entire grammar system. Uh, just as when Mahaprabhu was teaching to his uh, students, he would uh, use the concepts of Krishna, and Krishna's pastimes, Krishna's names everywhere. So similarly, when Jiva Goswami saw that, you know, many of the devotees are studying Sanskrit and uh, why to waste time so much because Sanskrit studying requires a lot of effort. So why to put, uh, why to waste their time in something which is not directly a devotional service. So he has you, he has come up with a whole system with the 3000 uh, sutras full of Krishna's names everywhere. Uh, so there also he uh, defines uh, pronunciation of uh, the different letters of Sanskrit, different syllables of Sanskrit, though not very in detail. Right? So these are our sources. Okay, now the introduction and story time is over. We are going to get into the actual pronunciation course. Uh, so. so I have uh, divided this into four levels. The reason is that the audience are a wide variety of audience, right? Some people have some basics. Some people don't know anything, right? Some people are more advanced, right? So I, based on that, I have divided into levels. So let's say if you know the basics, you may know how to pronounce the diacritics and the vowels and the consonants. You are just interested in, you know, finding out how can I find out the tune for a meter uh, for a verse or how I want to know something more advanced, nuances of pronunciation, you can go to level three and four directly, right? When you're watching the video offline. Uh, but, uh, you know, I don't know anything. I'm just new to Sanskrit, right? And you can start with the level one, but then you may feel that, you know, this diacritics and vowels itself is too much for me. Um, I cannot take it more. I have to practice it nicely before I can take it more, right? So you can just uh, take this uh, level one, go ahead, Take your time, practice it nicely, use it in your regular uh, scriptural study, and then come back whenever you feel comfortable. Then you can proceed with the level two and do the same process, you know, where you can pause it. So these are the uh, levels, and these are the points where you can pause and then come back as well. So that's why I have divided in this into four levels. Uh, the first level is I'm going to talk about the diacritics. You know, there are the diacritics marks. Whenever you open a verse, there's a dash on the top, there's a dot on the bottom in the English letters, right? Why is it even there? And uh, how to pronounce vowels in Sanskrit. 
So any uh, language has two sorts of, uh, the, the division is there, is vowels and consonants. So on the level two, we'll be looking into consonants. And in level three, we will be finding out how to quickly identify what tune I should be singing this verse, right? And in level four, we will see some of the advanced concepts like how to pronounce Anuswara, how to pronounce Visarga, which I have mentioned in the introduction video. Uh, so some of nuances around it, and there, there are some some simple Sandhi rules for your that help help in your pronunciation, and also mm, uh, some of the conjunct conjunctions of the consonants. So we will be looking at those things. Um, and then if we have time, uh, we will do a recitation of Bhagavad Gita chapter 1. Uh, one key thing to uh, pronunciation is that go slow, right? When you are reciting the verse, go slow. That helps in getting a good pronunciation of that particular verse. Okay, let's get into level one. Also, I will request to the later uh, GBC SPT team to create chapters in this uh, video of the recording so that you can go directly to the chapter and then start watching based on the levels. Okay. So here is level one. So this is the total set of alphabets in Sanskrit. There is a reason uh, for this division to be there. Is this one is divided, and this is you know this is, this is in a separate box. Let me just uh, use my pen. So here you see this is a separate set, and then this part is a separate set, and this is a set in itself. This is a set. This is a set. Right, and these things are a single set as well. It's a whole group. So there is a nice arrangement of uh, these. Uh, letters are done. And uh, Jiva Goswami tells in his Harinama Amrita Vyakarana that the first verse of Harinama Amrita Vyakarana is Narayana Dudbhutoyam Varna Kramaha. So he says, from, from Lord Narayana, this arrangement of letters have come. And that's why it's very scientific. He doesn't say these letters have come. He says, Varna Kramaha, this arrangement of letters have come from, has come from Lord Narayana himself. So when we are uh, looking at this arrangement of the letters, we can remember uh, Lord Narayana. This directly come from him. Okay. So this this part is the vowels. I'm using mouse, so you know where uh, my handwriting. So this part is the consonants. Okay, these are the general, this is the general division between the letters. We we'll look into detail. Now, uh, in the first level, we are going to look at the vowels as well as diacritics. Okay. So, okay, so what is the difference between vowel and consonant? Right. So vowels are those set of letters which doesn't depend on any other letter. It stands on its own. It's the unobstructed flow of air from your vocal cords. That is what vowels is. For example, this letter, which I will talk about, is A. Uh. So when I have to say this, uh, I can say this is, this is the flow of the air that's simply going through. I don't need to use any other sound for this. But for consonants, I have to use uh, a vowel. You see this here, A uh, is here is also. But the actual consonant is K. But A uh, is here just to aid the pronunciation because you cannot pronounce a consonant alone. In English, you may call it K. K is not the sound of the letter. K is a name for the letter. You can call it like that, right? So the the sound can be in English, it's different. We'll see at that. But K itself is, you cannot pronounce it. So you need a vowel to assist that. Why? Because the consonants are stop, stops of the free flow of air. So the vowels are 
blowing out the air with the sound and the consonants are stopping them. You see that you cannot stop unless you blow the air, right? So that's why the consonants always require a vowel to be there for it to be recognized. But for vowels blowing the air, it's easy just to go ahead and blow, right? So that's why Jiva Goswami calls vowels as Sarveshwara. So Sarva Ishwara, so it is the Supreme Lord. It is like the Supreme Lord. The Supreme Lord is Swarat, independent, right? But the consonants, he calls it Vishnu Jana. Oops. So this is all my writings are wrong. So this is Sarveshwara. And this whole thing is Vishnu Jana. Vishnu Jana. Vishnu Jana means literally the people of Lord Vishnu who are devotees. So the devotees always depend on the Supreme Lord, but the Supreme Lord himself is independent. And so you see that how Jiva Goswami using these concepts in I know, uh, teaching Sanskrit. So the Supreme Lord is independent, just as Supreme Lord is independent, these vowels are also independent in nature. They can produce the sound by their own on their own. But Vishnu Jana, the devotees, always depend on the Supreme Lord. They cannot uh, exist alone. So like that, these consonants also, they need the help of the vowels to be able to be pronounced. So, okay. So here we are looking at the vowels. Before we go into how these vowels have to be pronounced, we are going to look at the diacritics. So these are the different sorts of diacritics you would see in a verse. So what does the diacritic mean? Diacritic mean this uh, this mark is there. There is a dash on the top of A. And there is, you see the wave sign here. So first one is dash on the top. There is a wave sign on the top. This is called tilde. So this tilde sign is there on top of N. And there is a dot the next one on top of a letter and there is a dot at the bottom of the letter and there is a tick mark like this on top of yes and finally there is an underline right so as if the letter is underlined or something like that so these marks are called the diacritics right uh, this can be on different letters and these letters here I have put uh, they just to show uh, an example but uh, they would be on different letters as well so these are the different diacritic marks you would see I'm going to open a verse to show that so this is Bhagavad Gita chapter 1 text 1 so here you see the first two words. There is Dhritarashtra Vacha is there. There uh, under the R there is a dot. There is under yes there is a dot. There is a, a mar, there is a line on the top of A, right? Similarly, there is a dot under. It's a line on top, dot under, and there is here is you see the tick mark. A tick mark is there on the top of the letter, uh, and here you have the tilde symbol on top of and so these are the so looks like I cannot present from here I have to go from the beginning oh okay I can present from here all right so these are the uh, six uh, diacritic marks you would see and out of this, this, uh, out of this, 
this on is very very rare you in the whole bhagavad gita this is there in only one place and that is in verse so that is in word that is in chapter 4 and the verse number is Ah, 39. Verse number is 39. Let's see. Chapter 4, verse number 39. See this L? There is a underline on the at the bottom. In the whole Bhagavad Gita, this is the only place you have this one. And if you look at the Devanagari system, if you know Devanagari system, there is a Chandra Bindu on the top. This is, looks like a moon, so it's called Chandra, and there is a dot on the top of that uh, curve. So that is Bindu in Sanskrit. So Chandra Bindu. So this Chandra Bindu sign is represented in uh, English alphabet like this using a diacritic mark. Okay. Uh, regarding the script, uh, so many people think this. Uh, I'm sorry. Many people think this this uh, letter Devanagari system. This is actually Sanskrit, uh, right? No, this is a script. This is not Sanskrit. The script has a name. The script name is Devanagari. Deva Nagari. So you can use different script to represent the same sounds in Sanskrit. So when we say this, this whole uh, le arrangement of letters have come from Narayana, it is not the script that has come from. It has the sound has the arrangement of the sound has come from Lord Narayana. This script is actually thousand years old. It, it, is, it was it was I think it was standardized in the 10th century and then. It was widely used in 19th century, as late as 19th century. When Goswamis were writing Sanskrit words, they were not writing in Devanagari. They were using Bengali script to write uh, uh, Sanskrit works. Similarly, in the South, you would uh, people would use different script. The Alwars were using Tamil script to write uh, Sanskrit words. And um, in Telugu region also, they would use Telugu script or Malayalam script to write Sanskrit words. So the script is... Uh, uh, and before that, right, they would be writing in like Brahmi script, which would look like Chinese script or something like that, right? So the letters or the script changes. It is the sound that matters. See, in this modern time, currently, we are using this English alphabet script. It is called IAST. So this script, uh, script name is IAST, basically English alphabets with diacritic marks. So the script, this is the information about script. I don't think that, the, you know, you need to know Devanagari to really understand the Sanskrit or anything like that. No. Although many of the words are there in Devanagari. So if you're studying Sanskrit, you would have, uh, be in a better position if you study the Devanagari script also because you have to read those words. But fortunately for us, uh, you know, BBT and Prabhupada has given us uh, everything in IAST or the English alphabet. So we don't need to really learn for pronouncing our works uh, Devanagari system right okay so there is a difference between the English alphabets and the Sanskrit alphabets in English a single letter can have different pronunciation sounds for example this is letter a in English if you use it in the word it would become agency a same agency right? But in the word astonishment, you are using it, a uh, astonishment, right? This is Anglo, a. Uh. This is a, a, uh, a. Uh. And then here also, a. Uh. This is a, is a. So the single letter has multiple sounds behind it. That's why they, they don't call this letter with this, the sound name. They have a different name itself, a, right? representing the uh, range of sounds. 
I may be pronouncing some of these wrong because uh, some of these things wrong because uh, I'm not a native English speaker. Uh, and uh, and uh, for anyone to learn English, uh, this is one of the struggling issue because you don't know how the word has to be pronounced. You have to basically know the sound. You should have already learned about the word before actually you pronounce it correctly, right? Uh, but in Sanskrit, it is not the case. Every letter, here I mentioned A, this has only one sound associated with it. Every letter has only one sound. It does not have multiple sound. It doesn't become A here. It doesn't become A here. No, it has only one sound every letter, which is a good thing because once you master that sound, you don't need to worry about um, uh, remembering the word. Any any word, any big word, small word that 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 uh, that's given to you, you can pronounce it if you know the pronunciation. If you know the sound of each individual letter in that word, that's it. You can just uh, you know slowly uh, read to get read the single letters in that word, and that will be the pronunciation of the whole word. Unlike in English, right? So this is a good thing. And uh, uh, so with that said, let's look at the vowels itself. Let me clear the screen. Okay, so in English, you have these vowels A, E, I, O, U, right? But in Sanskrit, you have some extra as well. But all of these things are there. You see this here? This is A, letter A, letter E, letter U, letter A, uh, sorry, E, and letter O. You have A, E, I, O, U. All these things are there. So I'm going to mark it like this. All these letters are 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 all are represented by these letters A E I O U. There's like two letters joined together, but I'll I'll talk about it. But very simple, only these things. And there is that extra, this one and this one. So this one is very rare, these two pairs. This is rare that it does, it's not even present in Bhagavad Gita, these two letters, right? And these letters particularly, it's so rare that uh, uh, you would you would not see it anywhere other than just representing this letter. You So people call it imaginary letter just to balance out uh, the arrangement. Uh, but... Um, you would have to just use this letter to say that letter name. That's all. And that's the usage I have also not seen. Even Jiva Goswami also says this is not there in the usage. right? And uh, this is also rare. This is there in Bhagavad Gita. There's a handful of times you can count how many times it's there. And this is there in many places. right? So out of these uh, uh, letters which are outside the range we know, is this only one letter you need to worry about really speaking the other letters are you know, uh, not of so much of importance uh, okay now let's get into the letter itself how to pronounce it this is this is ah so what you have to do is open up your mouth don't squeeze your lips or uh, twist your tongue don't do that just simply open your mouth and then just let the ear go out of it with a sound. Uh, that's it. From the bar, from the from your vocal cords, you just to pronounce from your throat, you pronounce the sound. Uh, and that's the sound. This is ah, uh, right? This is not a, this is ah uh, uh. That's the sound, the free flow of that sound. Uh, this is the basis of all the sounds because this is just a free flow and all other uh, sounds are nothing but twisting your mouth to say the same sound. Right? This is a. Uh. So we'll come to this uh, with the dash mark after. And this one is E. So same thing you are saying. Uh, right? As if you are smiling. E. Cheese. 
people say e right and then the third letter is this is not u this is wu 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 not wu you should not put a you should not touch your uh lips with the teeth wu it's not wu it is wu just uh, you know uh, squeeze your lips and then just say the sound wu that's the sound this one is and this one is a a a somebody is you are calling hey right that a that a not ye some people say it ye that's not ye it's a a a right this is i oh sorry before that we will come here this one is o o o o o king parikshit the same o many of you are the same as in english letter o right uh then we'll we'll come to this one this dash on the top it just represents the time so this one when you are pronouncing you have to pronounce for a short time uh you should not be saying uh i just exaggerated it so for you to understand the sound okay uh that's all you have to say but whatever the time you are taking if you double it that is this sound ah uh, this one is ah uh, this one is ah uh, up ah up ah up ah it's just to the time factor similarly this one is e e e e and then this one is u u same thing you don't need to change anything right okay so that's why these are all pairs uh you know because they have the same sound and the only difference is you have to change the time uh this is the dash that represents this dash on the top basically says you need to increase the time of the pronunciation of that letter right and uh but these things they don't have a pair along with that this is all individual a i o o uh because of that reason this has to be pronounced as the same time as the longest one so you are saying ah uh, this one you say a hey, you should not be saying a hey, this has to be pronounced like a long vowel this is called long this is short a hey, it has to be pronounced like a long vowel it should not be pronounced like a hey. in some of the south indian scripts you will have this uh that are pronounced uh, for a short time you will have to worry variants you would, some people will say a a no here a a that's all you don't have a uh, short variation only the long variation a and then same thing with o it's also a long variation uh, variant you don't have the other one and this one is a combination of two letters as it has been mentioned here a uh, and the e together so when you are pronouncing ah uh, and then pronounce e a e a e a e so when you are transitioning from r to e you you would have that sound uh the sound in the middle of the transition that's the sound a e i that's the sound you have to just exaggerate i i so in some of the native hindi speakers they may pronounce it differently for example this word is there in english i am writing it this uh, a, a hindi speaker would be uh, saying it aishwarya aishwarya right this is not aishwarya this is aishwarya in sanskrit you have to pronounce it aishwarya you cannot say it aishwarya 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 i it is i it is not a right. and this one is mentioned as a combination of a and u it becomes or a and u it becomes a u a u so the transition is saying au 
basically that's the sound ow 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 that ow that's the sound this is ow so you have a a e e u u a i o ow okay these are the vowels we have got through it and uh, this these are as i said you know this 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 one oh, let me change the color of my marker so this one and these two are where still we see how to pronounce that this one is important so it is that's the sound so this is a controversial sound many people will pronounce it differently even in india if it goes uh, to some place they will say ru and in some other place they will say ri so they will say uh, this letter you know is so famous that it's also there in the uh, name of krishna so i see this one here krishna krishna so some people will say krishna because they are saying it ru krishna and some people will say krishna krishna because they are calling it ri so it, they call it ri and some people will say ru this is not a both because if you are saying krishna as i said uh, the alphabets are nothing but a simple flow of air if you are saying ru you are saying just just try to pronounce it ru huh? this is this is not a simple letter right you are only pronouncing u this looks like almost like this combination i and ao right but this is not this is an individual letter this ru there is r disappeared after that it is only u is there ru only u right here ri e only is there r disappeared right so not this is not ru this is not ri this is r so this is your tongue and like this right my tongue is outside like this this is your tongue so when you are uh, pronouncing this letter you have to bend it this is the top of your mouth let's say the upper jaw you should not touch the upper jaw just it's coming to touch like that ru 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 that's the sound i'm saying ru because to just to uh, that us us sound is i'm adding so that you can clearly understand otherwise ru ru i don't know whether i'm pronouncing or i'm just roaring so uh, when you are when i'm separately saying this letter i would be saying it ru okay but the actual sound is ru 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 so your tongue has to bend it ru 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 Oh, that's how you have to pronounce that. Okay, so here, Krishna, 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 and later we will learn all these two letters. They have their variants, but still these variant also pronounce in the same place where you are bending your tongue. Krishna, it comes. Your tongue is like this, right? Krishna, Krishna. So everything goes to the same place to pronounce that. and this one is just an extension of uh, this letter the time you need to say r r r okay r r and this one you have to slightly touch your tongue um, it is said by yoga swami like that slight touches there oh r so you you have to say the same uh, same similarly you have to bend your tongue but you are instead of saying a ra sound you have to say la sound that's the difference ru ru some people call it a ri or something like that but you see this ri if i have to say that there is many letters to it no we no it's not many letters this one letter ru 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 slight touch slight touch is there ru 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 It's eight so o'clock. This one is imaginary letter. It's just an extension of the pre the previous one. Oh, oh, oh. So this one is 
er. This one is er. This one is er. This one is er. So all you need to do is just memorize this one. Don't worry about anything else because we don't see this in Bhagavad Gita. These are these two letters. Are this is this this one. It will come automatically if you know this one, right? Er, er. That's the sound. Okay. Huh. Okay, so we are going to see some examples of this from Bhagavad Gita. I'm going to exit this presentation. So let's go to the verse 229. Oops. Okay, so here there is a lot of a uh and ah. Uh, right? We see this here. Ah, uh, ashcharya. Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so then I'm going to pick up another verse. Here, there are a lot of E's. This yogi. This is not yogi. Many people say yogi. It's a, here it's C. It's given. Yogi. That's how you need to pronounce. Yogi. You have to extend that. Yun, yunji. Right? Raha C, C, E, very short one, not a longer one. Right? Ekaki, right? Nirashi, Apari, short, Apari. And another verse for U. So we completed A, A, E, E, then we are going to U, U. So you see, boo, 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 right? Here, boo, 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 right? Uh, there is the no short U is here, and so but you there is a short U, you would say boo, boo, boo. Okay, and. So we are going. We completed u u. Then ru 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 ru. So here you have this. This the long one is there. In the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita. Putru putru putrun putrun bhatrun bhatrun bhatrun. Sukhru, Sukhru, that I'm adding the U sound, so otherwise, I know it's not very clear where I'm stopping there. That's that's a step. But actual, when you're pronouncing the whole word, you don't add the U sound. You don't say Sukhru Dash, no. Sukhru Dash, Sukhru Dash, R, R. That's the sound you need to use. Right? This Patrun, Bhatrun, right? Uh, as I said, these two letters are not there in Bhagavad Gita. And uh, A, we are going to A. So you have Vyamishre, Vyamishre, Ne, Vake, Me, A. Eka, eka, yeka. You cannot say like that. This is eka. This is ye. You have y in the beginning, right? Ye. This is a. See the difference? Ye, a, e. ye, a, e. right? Yena, she, right? 
and then two more verses, uh, three more verses. This is, uh, we completed A, A, and then you have I, Chai, Chai. Here you see two letters together. Don't read it as A and E. You have to read together Chai, right? And Shwetai, Shwetai, Hayai, Hayai. And six. He completed I and O. It's very easy, you see. Tapas with Yo, Diko, Yo, Yani, Yo, Mato, Chadiko, Yo, Yogi. And then Ao. So here you have Rag, Dwe, Shau, Dwe, Shau, Dwe, Shau. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention that here. You see this A, you have to extend. O, you have to extend. But this I and Au, already a combination of two vowels, it is extended by itself. I. You see, it's it's actually taking the two times of what we say, uh, I. This is Au, because it is already a combination of two letters. Dwe shau, vyavas titau, pari pantinau, tau. So this is, these are examples from Bhagavad Gita. So here the diacritics used are a dash on the top and dot at the bottom, right? Only these four uh, letters have dot at the bottom. Otherwise, you have, uh, for other things, you have the dash on the top. Dash on the top, it says that I would increase the time, time for that song. Okay, let's go into the next two. level. So here are the level one completes. So you all know how to pronounce the vowels by now. Level two. So level two, you have the consonants we are going to talk about. And uh, there's so many consonants. Vowels were, you know, very uh, short in number. We had a lot of consonants you have. Okay, so I have uh, got a question here from Govinda Prematiji. I'm going to uh, take that question and answer. I have my... Uh, a stream yard running on this side of my la uh, computer. So that's why I'm looking at this screen. I have heard in a number of sutras in Harinama are less than Panini grammar. Mataji, would you like to say the question? Sure, sure, Prabhu. So the question here is uh, it came from YouTube and he's asking, I'm going to show it on our screen here. I've heard that the number of sutras in Harinamrit Vyakran is less than Panini Vyakran. Is it true? Okay, yeah. So that is true. Uh, Panini is, Panini's uh, Vyakran, you have around 4,000 sutras. In Harinamamrita Vyakran, you have around 3,000 sutras. So there's like thousands of, uh, thousand sutras are not there. Uh, one thing is um, Panini's grammar, it... Uh, also, he has created the grammar system for Vedas as well. So it covers some additional rules for how you can uh, read the verses in Vedas. But uh, Jiva Goswami's system, it doesn't give any rules for how you can read the Vedas. Uh, it gives rules for how you can read the Puranas. This, this They call it Laukika Sanskrit and the Vedic Sanskrit. It's not like two different Sanskrits uh, in itself exist. It's just... Uh, uh, additional rules you need to use when you are interpreting the Vedic verses. So Panini system, in that sense, it's complete because 
uh, you have the you can read through the Vedas as well. But you know how many of us are reading the Vedas, right? So Jiva Goswami's main intention is that we read Bhagavatam and we read the other Puranas as well related to that. So he has given those uh, sutras only. And the uh, other thing is uh, with the Panini system, it is not created for a learner in mind. It is for experts. It's not for the beginners. So, uh, for example, if I have to create a word, Ramaha, I would have to remember all the 4,000 sutras in my mind. I have to keep and then I have to compute and then I have to bring out the word Ramaha. But in Harinama uh, Vyakaran, it's not the case. Uh, there, I just need to know very specific section, maybe a couple of uh, three, four sutras or something like that here and there. That's all. Now, you, I don't need to remember a whole lot uh, to uh, know that. So, Jeeva Swami has created his grammar system with learner, the beginners in mind. Uh, but Pani system is not like that. Pani system is a complete system, but it is also not for the beginners. Perfect, Prabhu. I think uh, the same devotee is having a follow-up question. He's asking, how do we decide whether to study Panini's grammar? I think you touched on it briefly. Or should Ajiba Goswami's grammar? Any metrics we should take into account while deciding to go ahead? Right. So you see the number of sutras I'm talking about is 3,000, 4,000. It's in thousands, right? So uh, it takes a lot of time. So if you're deciding to study, I, I would suggest you to study Harinama Murita Vyakarana because let's say you are working in as, a, as an engineer or, a, or something you are doing for your daily uh, life to be maintained. And then the side you want to study the grammar, you don't want to start with the Panini's grammar, which can take for six years, you know, or 12 years. Even Harinama Murita Vyakarana can also deeply, if you want to study, it can take a longer time. But you want, don't want to spend that much time just memorizing something which is not devotional service. You have to put a lot of effort. If you're putting a lot of effort, why not do bhakti, right? So if you are uh, studying Harinama Murita Vyakarana, you are actually chanting the names of Krishna. So it's also your chanting, your bhakti. You're also performing bhakti for a long time. So I would recommend to uh, study, uh, I would recommend you to study uh, Harinama Murita Vyakarana instead of Panini. And, uh, you know, it's not a lot of things you will miss out or anything like that. So, Jiva Goswami's grammar rules, the sutras, uh, there is a one-to-one -one correspondence to uh, Panini's grammar rules. So, even if you study Jiva Goswami's grammar, you will understand uh, how the Panini system, with the one or two classes, you can understand how, how it's there, and then you can map it, and then you can go ahead and study for the rules if you think that, you know, I have completed studying Bhagavatam understanding nicely. I want to study now, let's say Upanishads, and I, I want to nicely uh, read through it. So you can read this additional rules. So this is my recommendation. Can you give any example of how they are uh, different? Like you were saying in uh, Shri Goswami's grammar, uh, you're chanting Krishna's names. Are the sutras based on Krishna's names? Any yeah. Example you can share with us. Yeah, so, so there is one sutra that comes to my mind is Vishnu Daso, Vishnu Padante, Hari Guhoshecha, Hari Gada. This is a rule uh, which is actually talking about how you can make Sandhi in Sanskrit, right? When two letters come together, how you ought to make. But you see that everywhere is Vishnu's name. Vishnu Daso, Vishnu Padante, Hari Guhoshecha, Hari Gada. Everywhere is Krishna's name, right? So in this way, you are, uh, but if you read this Panini's gra grammar, you would see rules like. Uh, 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 there's no Krishna's name there. It's all uh, some technical terms you are using it. So, and you're memorizing these, right? Yeah, you are You are memorizing. You have to recite every day. So you would uh, be spending time in for like next 12 years or six years or two years if you are going for a shorter version. So Okay. I'm just going to take um, this devotee's another question. He said, would you be kind to point a list of resources to learn Harinamrit Vyakran? Uh, I, if you can point out a few right now, but um, if you would like or have any questions about Prabhu's PowerPoint, please write to the GBC SPT uh, email and uh, we'll be happy to share. I'm sure Prabhu will be willing to share all the documents with us and we can share. But would you like to point out any resources right offhand if you have any? Yeah, 
So there is one book by Matsya Avatar Das Prabhu. Uh, he lives in Australia currently, but he was uh, along with uh, Gopi Parandana Prabhu. They were teaching Harinama Amrita Vyakarana. So he has translated uh, a selective 1500 sutras from Harinama Amrita Vyakarana uh, for us to learn, which would be most of the time you would be using only that 1500 sutras, not all the 3000. You know that the other 1500 they're talking about exceptions but most of the time you would be using this 1500 sutras so he had picked up those sutras and then he has translated along with the commentary his work is there is there in rbl uh, site this rash bihari lal you can go ahead and purchase that book it's, it comes in two volumes that's one the other thing is uh, i also started recently teaching about that uh, uh, Matsya Avatar Prabhu's book. I have produced one video. So I'm planning to do that more. Uh, you can contact uh, uh, write to GB GBC SPT email and I can share with you uh, other resources. Definitely. Thank you so much, Vijay Prabhu. We have another question from Shankaranandha Prabhu. Uh, what is the significance of the letter R? Uh, as Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, he is the letter uh, Right. Hare Krishna Shankaran Prabhu, please accept my humble obeisances. So, as I mentioned in the previous uh, slide, this ah uh, is the unobstructed flow of air. So, all the sounds are nothing but modification of this sound ah. Uh. So, let's say ah, uh, if I have to say e, ah, uh, e, all I have to do is just to change uh, my uh, mouth, change all the lips, and change the position of jazz. But still, I am pronouncing the same sound. Uh, it's just that I'm changing the uh, position of my mouth, right? I'm squeezing it here, there. Ooh is also the same thing. Uh, ooh. I'm just squeezing my mouth, and then the sound is changing to ooh, right? So the ah uh sound, which is just pushing the air, pushing the air from your throat with the sound, that's the basis, and that's the substratum on which all the letters are sitting. And that's why Krishna is saying, I am the letter R, because without that, none of the letters could exist. It's the so, foundation. Yeah, it's the foundation. foundation. Right. Perfect. Thank you so much, Prabhu. We are getting a lot of appreciation. I just want to share a few very informative and enjoyable, uh, very clear, perfect presentation. And um, here we have all the sounds also in my mother language which is dutch oh so nice. there is some reference from <laughs> different languages and so thank you thank you very much prabhu please continue your presentation and i will bring your powerpoint you. back up here again Hare Krishna. okay so this is we are in the consonants so the consonants have a lot of letters, so it may it might intimidate us, but don't worry, it's actually very simple once you understand the system behind it. You have only a five different sounds in this box. Only five different sounds with the modification, slight modification. The sound is this is k. K. So again, I said I'm putting a here because without a I cannot pronounce. It is a stop. I'm just stopping the air without pushing the air. I cannot do that, right? So I stop and release the air. K, K, and then that sound comes, right? I can put other vowels as well. I can put instead of A, uh, I can put E here. He, he, right? So this K is appearing from your throat. This is called guttural or kanta in Sanskrit. So your vocal cords, it has to come directly from there. K, K, not K, K, not somewhere else from the mouth. It should not come from here. K, K, right? And this is Ch, Ch. Okay, I'm going to draw the tongue here. This is your tongue. Uh, here you see this, this is the tongue. So this one, I'm drawing it out explicitly. The tongue has uh, three parts. This is the front of the tongue, and this is the mid of the tongue, and this is the root of the tongue, right? This is called jiva mulia, the root. Jiva is the tongue, mulia is the root, the root of the tongue, right? Uh, so for pronouncing the sh, 
you have to use the middle part of your tongue. The middle part has to squeeze like this. Sure, sure. The middle part has to squeeze toward this. Uh, this is called the palate. Or the roof of the tongue. The roof, uh, the upper jaw, that roof. So there, the middle part of the tongue has to squeeze like this. Cha, 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 cha. And it has to touch. So all, all these uh, five things, right, these consonants, you are going to touch uh, your upper jaw and lower jaw. So when I say touch, the lower jaw parts, which include teeth, lips, and your tongue, are going to touch the upper part of the jaw, which includes lips, teeth, and uh, the roof of the jaw. Right? So it's going to touch there. Cha, cha. So this one is called sparshi in Sanskrit. Sparshi means touching. Sparsha means touch. And the vowels are called asparshi. There is no touch there. In When you are pronouncing the vowels, you should not touch anywhere. There's the exception is that the U sound slightly out to touch. But other than that, you shouldn't be touching anything, right? So that's called asparshi. This is called sparshi, right? So I'm going to show one thing before I proceed with the next sounds. A fun fact in uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, uh, when Brahma goes on to meditation in chapter 9, uh, So here is the word when Brahma, when he woke up from the lotus, it was all dark. So he doesn't know what, he did not know at the time what to do. So at the time he heard two syllables, ta and the pa. Uh, this is the syllable here, ta and the pa, right? So here, how it is mentioned in the Bhagavata verse itself, it says, sparsheshu. Sparsheshu means in the sparsha. He said the consonants are called the sparsha, right? Sparsheshu Shodasham, Shodasham, the 16th letter. So in this one, this 25 letters, the 16th letter is, this is 5, 10, 15, and this is 16, right? This is the letter 16. Sparsheshu Shodasham, right? And Eka Vimsham, Eka Vimsham 21st, 21st. So this is 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Ta, pa, ta, pa. That's what he has heard uh, when Brahma uh, Prabhupada writes about these things here. You can see this is the word he has heard. Tapa. Tapa means do. It's a command. Do penance. Right? Uh, so the Lord is asking him to do penance at that point. Uh, so this is how it's uh, used there. So fun fact. Okay. So uh, this is your tongue, the middle part is squeezing near to the, uh, touching this roof uh, of the uh, upper jaw. Sha, cha, 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 cha. And this one is the difficult one for uh, English speakers. This is ta, ta. So your tongue, this is your tongue, right? So you have to bend the tongue like this and then you have to uh, you know push it back ta, 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 ta. nicely you have to bend it you know touching the roof you know anywhere in the roof a uh, little back not in the front ta, ta, ta. so you might in english you would say t t so t also you are doing the same thing but in the beginning right the beginning of the roof you for you are saying T, 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 near to the teeth, right? But you have to say T, T is different from T. Now it's not T, T, it is T, T. You have to nicely bend, bend, and you should not be pushing out the air, like in T, I'm pushing out the air, T. If I don't push out the air, it would be like T. So that's why, you know, Indians, they say T, they don't say T, right? Because, because of this, uh, you know, Sanskrit background, right? T, T, 
instead of saying T, you have to say T, T, like how an Indian would pronounce T. Uh, so you bend that nicely, the tongue back. T, 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 push it forward. T, T, that's how you need to pronounce. Right? This one is easy. T, so there I am touching the lips, uh, sorry, uh, teeth. My tongue, the front part of my tongue is actually touching the teeth. T, 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 you wouldn't go wrong if you do like that, right? And this one, I'm using the lips. Just the wrist. Pa, 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 pa. You see that how, how it's systematically arranged? From the throat comes the ka. And in the roof comes the cha and the ta. And then the ta comes from the teeth. And the pa comes from the lips. There is a gradual progress. Uh, so this system is actually quite amazing because in English, you don't have this A, B, C, you have like, you know, a weird sort of arrangement. So when the, when the British came to India and then they figured out that uh, this system is nicely arranged, they were like years of research. They, they got years of research knowledge. So they, their uh, study of phonetics advanced so fast after looking at this arrangement of letters, right? So, uh, so because you know this is very scientifically arranged, and many of the terms now has been taken from uh, Sanskrit, and then they gave an English term for that, and it's used in the study of phonetics. Okay, so you have only five sounds. There is the K, uh, and then sorry, Let's see. I can erase this. A and C, this is, and then you have a T with a dot at the bottom, and then you have a T, and then you have P. K, Ch, Ch, T, T, P. Right? That's it. Only these five sounds exist, and these are all just variants of the sound, so which is a good news. Right. Uh, you need to just remember this five sounds correctly. So this entire column, it is uh, you have to pronounce the same sound in the first column, but you have to push the air. This is k. This is k. The first time I heard, right, I couldn't make any difference. Uh, you know, I was hearing from a Hindi speaker around ten years back, and then he was saying, Kuh. "I'm coming from South India." Uh, Tamil Nadu, uh, we don't have this differentiation. So first time somebody was pronouncing to me K and K, uh, it looks same to me. What are you saying, right? So the difference is the pushing of the air. K, 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 just as you would cough, right? <coughs> right? When you're coughing, you have to do the same. K, 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 K. Remember the coughing sound. So when you're coughing, you're uh, your stomach here will would be pushing inside. Cup, 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 cup. So that's that's what you're doing there. Ka, 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 ka. You're just adding a cuffing sound to that. Similarly, this one also. Cha. This is cha, cha. This is ta. Tongue is bending backward. Ta, ta, and then you have to push it forward. Ta, ta, and this, this one is with a coughing sound. Ta, 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 right? This is ta, the, sorry, this is touching the teeth. Ta, 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 this is ta, ta. You might spit under some people in front of you, but you know, over the years you can learn without spitting. Ta and ta. And uh, this is pa, this is Pa, same thing. So in Hindi, this sound is pronounced differently. They use this F sound. Fa, fa, fa. This is in Sanskrit, it is not fa. It is pa and pa with a cuffing sound. That's it. Pa, 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 not fa. This is pa, 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 right? So this is the whole uh, column. You just need to add a cuffing sound to the first one. Right? That's it. Now the third uh, uh, 
uh, column this is a voiced this is called uh, this is called uh, unvoiced or non voiced this one is voiced so basically you have to speak like a big man you know like a big mojo standing uh, in front of you like that and say instead of saying ka you have to say ga ga coming from the throat you know a uh, little bit of uh, a manly voice you can add ka ga ga like a big person right this one is also cha this one is ja ja right uh, you can use you can see this is this a g is there so you would be already familiar with the sound as well same thing ta and then you have da 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 this is a d is there da 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 same thing but with a you know from adding a voice to it da da and then you have ta and then you have da ta da ta da ta da right and then you have pa this is ba ba ah uh, sorry not the I forget about my hands pa ba pa ba pa ba right this is just a voiced i am going to erase all the things in the slide so that i can write here so this is an unvoiced this is voiced this one is with the air same this one is also with the air but it belongs to this voiced one right ga 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 this cough sound ja ja da 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 ba ba right so this is a nasal sound you have to use your nose also for this one uh this is na this is from the throat as i said this is coming from the throat na 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 so you have to use your nose as well na 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 so this you would most of the time pronounce it correctly because this letter always is followed by one of these letters it never comes uh uh before any other letter one of these letters follows so for example you have this word in english song so that's the sound mm. song this g is following you see that song right so similarly in uh, sanskrit you have the word sanga sanga you it is not sanga sanga which i am not using my nose at all but you are you use the nose sanga sanga right that's the sound and uh, this is ch this is you are squeezing your middle part of the tongue near the roof here also nya 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 you have to uh, do the same thing so the easy way to pronounce that is you have the canyon canyon this nya nya that's the sound here nya canyon nya nya pinata that's that's the sound nya right and this one is na but with a twist same thing as your ta you are bending the tongue back right and then you are retroflexing you are pushing it forward so similarly na you cannot say simply na but take your tongue backwards na 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 not na na look at the difference na 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 right and this is ta and this is na normal na your tongue has to just to touch the teeth just as you do the touching the teeth in ta ta na na same thing pa ma use the lips that's it ma ma okay this this is called uh, semi vowels why this is called semi vowels because as you said the vowels you are you shouldn't be touching the lower jaw and upper jaw shouldn't be touching 
consonants which should be touching these 25 letters we saw, but the semi vowels are in between, right? So slightly touching, it has to be there. Ishat Sparshi, Jiva Goswami calls it. So this is ya, 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 just as how you pronounce to the, uh, sorry, just as how you pronounce this cha. Same place, the tongue has to bend. Ya, cha, ya, cha, ya. But with this one is full touch, this one is slight touch. Ya, ya. And ra, ra, ra. This is same as this this one. Tongue has to bend, but slightly, right? Ra, 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 ra. La, it's same as this ta. La, 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 la. Touching the teeth. Like the la slightly la la. This is va va slightly. The lip has to touch uh, the upper part, which is the teeth. Va 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 not va va not like that. Va va slight touch. Ya ra la va. This is a uh, little difficult. It's called uh, ushmana. So, uh, this is all the sound of hissing, hissing sound with the yes, right? So, like a snake hisses, that sound you will see here in this. So, the differentiation among these things is this, uh, again, the same thing. This one is similar to ch, the same where you are squeezing your tongue, you ought to pronounce it the same place. Sh, 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 right? And this one is like ta hmm. you bend your tongue uh, sh, 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 sh. The, this one is this difference you see sh, ch, like ch, ch, sh, ch, sh, ch, sh. same uh, way you have to use the tongue and the force where the air is hitting same place ch, sh, ch, sh. this is sh. Just like a ta, sha, ta, sha, ta, sha. This one is easy. This one is sa, ta, like the ta we mentioned here. I like that. Ta, sa, ta, sa, ta, sa. In the front part of the T, sa. This is sha, sha, sa, sha, sha, sa, sha, sha, sa, sha. Sha, sa. And this one is just uh, from your throat. Ha, 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 ha. Right. Okay, so uh, this is about the consonants. We are running out of time, so I'm going to skip practicing for this. I had a practice session, but uh, we are running out of time, so I'm going to skip the practice. Uh, I'm going to go to the level three. So, uh, so, so this is a level two. There is a fun fact. Uh, this is the verse in Bhagavad Gita, chapter three, text three. It, this is the verse in Bhagavad Gita that has single verse in Bhagavad Gita that has most of the consonants in it. It has seventy-five percent of the consonants in uh, in this one verse, except the boxes in red. Uh, all other remaining consonants are there in this uh, verse. Shri Bhagavan Vacha Lokesmin Vividhanushta Pura Prokta Mayanagha Jnana Yogena Sankhyanam Karma Yogena Yoginam Okay, so moving on to level three. So level three is very entertaining and uh, nice. This <laughs> not a lot of rules are there uh, about finding a tune uh, for a verse. Many times when we encounter when we are reading Bhagavad Gita or Bhagavatam, suddenly a verse appears and then we don't know how to pronounce, how to which tune to use, right? So it's there's a lot of science behind it. I'm not going to go into the details. I'm going to give you a short hint, which is a which is an approximate hint. That can help you in uh, finding out quickly uh, the tune. 
is to count the number of syllables. So, so you have to count the syllables. A syllable, a syllable is a single unit of sound. The easiest way to count is count the number of vowels because without a vowel, a syllable cannot exist, right? And in a syllable, no two vowels can exist, right? So the simplest way is count the number of vowels, right? Uh, in one line, this is divided into four lines. You see that? So one line, this is, this is one, uh, E is there, this is two, R is there, three, four, five, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. This is r, r, r. That sound. That's also a vowel. Uh, Thirteen, and this is fourteen. So there are total fourteen syllables or fourteen vowels are there in the first line of the verse, first quarter of the verse. So you look it up this table. This table you can print it out, print out and keep it with you. So this table it says 14 means Brahma Samhita. So you have to use uh, the use that tune. Chinta Mani Prakara Sadma Sukalpa Vriksha Laksha Vrateshu Sura Bhira Bhipala Yantam Lakshmi Sahasra Shata Sambrahma Sevyamanam. Govinda Madi Purusham Tamaham Bhajami. So, this tune, whenever you find uh, 14 uh, syllables in a single row, you can use this Brahma Samhita uh, tune. And, uh, and, and, you know, there are varieties of it which I will talk about it, but more or less you can just uh, squeeze the tune to fit for that verse, right? But, but if it is uh, the specific meter that we are looking at here, then the Tune will perfectly fit, right? If it is eight syllable, then it is uh, you have to use the Bhagavad Gita regular. The Bhagavad Gita regular is you see this first verse of Bhagavad Gita. I will take. I'm going to do the counting. So leave the first line, right? The first line is basically speaking. The speaker is speaking. If if there are five lines are there, you have to leave the first line. Is this the four lines or a matter, right? You count one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you have eight syllables. So it's the Bhagavad Gita regular meter. Okay. Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre Samaveta Yuyutsavaha Mamakaf Pandavashchaiva this is the tune. The, the fun fact is you, our Hare Krishna mantra also has just write it here. Also has eight eight syllables in a line. I'm going to write Hare. Oops. I'm not using the diacritics because my keyboard is not working with this one. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So it also has one A, E, R. This is this is also vowel. It's not R, it's R. This is A, 4, 5, 6, Seven, eight. So this is a Bhagavad Gita regular. So you can use the Bhagavad Gita meter for chanting Hare Krishna mantra. Or the reverse, you can use any tune of Hare Krishna mantra to recite Bhagavad Gita, the short verses. Let's say one of the Hare Krishna tunes. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. I'm going to say, use the same tune. Dharma Kshetre Kuru Kshetre Samaveta Yuyutsava Mama Kaf Pandavas Chaiva Kimakurvata Sanjaya. Same tune you can use because they are in the same meter. Right? 
Anushtub. Uh, okay, so then there is, if there are 11 syllables, it's Bhagavad Gita irregular. So uh, in Bhagavad Gita, you would see this uh, coming up at places like uh, uh, 11th chapter where Vishwarupa, uh, the form is described. This is Bhagavad Gita 1125. So you have to use Bhagavad Gita irregular meter. These are 11 uh, syllables are there. One. And then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right? So you have to use Dhamstra Karala Nichate Mukhani Drishtvai Vakala Nala Sanni Bhani Dishona Jane Nala Becha Sharma Prasida Devesha Jagan Nivasa. So this, this one you can use. The other thing I can think about is Aho Bakiyam. Uh, this is also the 11 syllables are there. So, Aho Bakiyam Stanakala Kutam Jighang Sayapaya Yadapya Sadhi Lebhega Tintad Triyuchitam Tatonyam Kamma Dayalum Sharanam Rajema Same because it also has the and 12 syllables is the most uh, erratic one because it has uh, so many variants. But our Dhamodrashtakam also has 12 syllables. Uh, um, let me open that. Nama Mishwaram Sachit Ananda Rupam Lasar Pundalango Kule Brajamanam Yashoda Biolu Kaladhavamanam Parabrishtamatyanto Drutya Gopya. So uh, you have 12 syllables there. I swallowed up. <laughs> One syllable at the last line is Paramrishta uh, Matyanta Todrutya Gopya. You can try to fit the Damodra Ashtaka meter, but this is, as I said, it's uh, there's so many variants. I'll talk about why later. And 14 is Brahma Samhita. 17 syllables are this Das Das Anudas. You know this verse? This verse is. Naham vipro nachanarapati napi vaisho nachushudro. Naham vipro nachanarapati napi vaisho nachudro. Naham varni nachagruhapati no one as to yatirwa. Naham varni nachagruhapati no one as to yatirwa. Kintu prodian nikila paraman and the porna brutabhe. Kintu Prodhyan Nikhila Paramananda Purnam Ritabhed Gopi Bhattu Padakamala Yodasa Dasa Anudas Gopi Bhattu Padakamala Yodasa Dasa Anudas So uh, the same with uh, this Naham words Naham Vande Mukunamala Stotra Okay, here you are. Uh, so this fourth verse, Naham vande tava charana yo dvandva mad dvandva heto. Naham vande tava charana yo dvandva mad dvandva heto. Kumbi pakam guruma pihare narakam napane tum. Ramya rama mrudutanulata nandane napirantum bhave bhave. Hridaya Bhavane Bhavaye Yam Bhavantam. Same tune uh, of uh, the Dasa Dasa Anudas because they are in the same meter. And they all have uh, 17 syllables in a line. And then if there are 19 syllables, then you use uh, Shargo Swami Ashtakam uh, tune. You just need to count the number of syllables in that. It has 19 syllables in one line, right? Krishna Kitana Gana Nartana Paro Premam Rita Mhoni Dhi Dhira Dhira Janapriya 
ಪ್ರಿಯಕರೌ ನಿರ್ಮತ್ಸರೌ ಪೂಜಿತ ಶ್ರೀ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾಭರ ಭುವಿ ಭುವೋ ಭಾರಾವಹಾಂತಾರಕೌ ವಂದೇ ರೂಪ ಸನಾತನೌ ರಘುಯುಗೌ ಶ್ರೀ ಜೀವ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಕೌ So this is the tune. If there are 19, you can use Shad Goswami Ashtakam. And if you count to 21, this is the Vandeham Shri Guru. This is the Mangala Charan verse. Shri Krita Padakamalam. Right? So you can use this. And uh, this is the technical name for the meters here I have given. So the one outside the bracket is called a category. So the eight syllables are under the category Anushtub. Anushtub has... many variants within it right so anushtub is not a single meter name anushtub has many variants within it one of the variants is the shloka that's the bhagavad gita regular the shloka is the meter name for bhagavad gita regular right we also call the verse as shloka but there is a meter name also called shloka and bhagavad gita irregular comes under this 11 syllables comes in the trishtub if there are 11 syllables that's the trishtub cat- category they belong and inside that they have so many variants you have upajati and uh, 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 indra vajra all these different variants are there and then if there are 12 syllables uh, that comes under the category jagati it's a category and then this damodara ashtakam is belongs to bhujanga prayatam literally it means snake departing right the snake is going away i don't know why they kept the name ಭುಜಂಗ ಪ್ರಯಾತ ದಟ್ಸ್ ದಾಮೋದರ ಅಷ್ಟಕಂ ದರ್ ಆರ್ ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಅವೈಲೇಬಲ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ಜಗತಿ ಅಂಡ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ಟೀನ್ ಸಿಲಬಲ್ ಒನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ ದ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ದ ಕ್ಯಾಟಗರಿ ಇಸ್ ಕಾಲ್ಡ್ ಶಕ್ವರಿ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಮೀಟರ್ ನೇಮ್ ಫಾರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸಂಕಿತ ಇಸ್ ವಸಂತ ತಿಲಕ ಆರ್ನಮೆಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಪ್ರಿಂಗ್ ರೈಟ್ ತಿಲಕ ಇಸ್ ದಿಸ್ ತಿಲಕ ಆರ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಡಿಫರೆಂಟ್ ಡೆಕೊರೇಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಯುವರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಹೆಡ್ ವಸಂತ ಇಸ್ ದ ಸ್ಪ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಅ ಡೆಕೊರೇಷನ್ ಆನ್ ದ ಸ್ಪ್ರಿಂಗ್ ಅಂಡ್ ದ ಸೆವೆಂಟೀನ್ ಸಿಲಬಲ್ ಇಸ್ ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡರ್ at yashti at yashti right and that's the category and the specific meter we sang uh, the tune uh, sorry the specific meter the verse appeared is manda kranta it's like slow walking slow gait the king is walking slow gait right that's how we are naham vande tava charana yo dvandva madvandva heto like that the king is walking very slow right uh and you have uh, 19 is the shadgo swami ashtakam that's uh, the category is ati dhriti and uh, inside that what we uh, the shadgo swami ashtakam itself is written in shardula vikriditam meter shardula vikriditam is play of tiger it's like a play of tiger uh, uh, what is that what is that what is ಕೃಷ್ಣೋಕೀರ್ತನ ಗಾನನ ತನ ಪರೌ ಬಂ 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 ಪಂ ಪಂ ಬಂ 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 ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಅ ಟೈಗರ್ ವಿತ್ ಅ ಹೆವಿ ಫುಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಬಟ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಪ್ಲೇ ಫುಟ್ ಬಂ 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 ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ರೈಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಪಿಯರ್ಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಟ್ ಅಗೇನ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಟ್ಯೂನ್ ಇಟ್ಸ್ ಸೆಲ್ಫ್ ಇಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ದ ಮೀಟರ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ಟೂ ಡಿಫ್ರೆಂಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮೀಟರ್ ದೇರ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಟ್ಯೂನ್ ಮೆನಿ ಪೀಪಲ್ ಕನ್ಫ್ಯೂಸ್ uh they call the tune as the meter no the tune is musical composition using raga and tala right but the meter name is uh, shardula vikriditam you can use different tunes for the uh, same meter right and 21 is the uh, prakriti it's the category and the uh, specific meter is sraddhara and is a bearer of garland a person who is wearing garland and he is just you know uh, graciously appearing there so that's it and uh, when you are pronouncing just to go every syllable you have to pronounce it correctly then it fits in the meter if you swallow one syllable the tune will not fit so you have to keep that in your mind and uh, uh and uh, you have mm, let's see so there's a fun fact that happened uh, in my life like right? so i compose verses now and then so when you are composing verse it's not like you just to compose some verse and then somebody comes and says oh this applies in this meter no when the acharyas or shukadev goswami they are speaking they are composing the verse uh they are keeping in their mind 
a specific tune, they have sorry, specific meter they want to compose in. The reason could be that there is a change of the topic. For example, in Bhagavad Gita, it goes as a regular meter and then irregular appears when there's an important message or change of the mood. Visharupa, this is grandeur. So when the change of the mood happens, the meter changes. Or if I have to fit a particular name, for example, uh, uh, let's say if I have to use Vaisheshika Dasa, I have to use in a meter. I cannot randomly use in any meter. The name has to fit in a fit in a particular meter, only then I can use that meter if I want to use this name, right? Uh, like that. And if you take out one syllable from the words, you know, you know, I don't, I want you to change just this word and that word, then you may end up in a situation that you ought to rewrite the whole words also. Yes, you want to say something? Hare Krishna Prabhu, such Hare a wonderful you. explanation. We have a couple of questions if okay. I know we were discussing on the meter and the questions are quite relevant here. Okay. So we have uh, a devotee is asking, what is the difference, if you can explain a little more in depth, between the meter and the tune? Uh, okay. She mentioned your category, but I'm thinking she's referring to tune. Okay. So uh, I think I don't have this slide. Anyways. So this category is basically a group of meters, just like human being is a category. Under human being, that's I'm Vijay existing, and uh, my wife Mohini Madhavi existing, right? And Govinda Priya Mataji, these are all different human beings, right? So human being is the category, and this different uh, names are given to different personalities. I'm a different personality than my wife or than Govinda Priya Mataji. So that that that's that's the difference here anushtub is the is the is the category like eight syllables should be there in each line whichever verse has eight syllables in each line that's the anushtub meter but shloka has a more stricter rules which will say where the long vowel has to appear where the short vowel has to appear um, and then in, there is a different uh, uh, meter and the same anushtub it will say oh the short and long vowel has to appear here and there there is some more rules to it which I'm not going to cover here. So that's the thing. Okay. So the Anushtupa Chandaha, that is the meter. Right. So what we discuss right now over here is we've discussed the different meters, the categories. Right. The categories. Categories and specific example I have given of the meter. The Shloka is a meter and Anushtupa is a category. Correct. Okay. So the categories of the different tunes is what we've discussed here. Right. Yeah. Meter. Right. Okay. Anushtub is also called a jati in his Sanskrit. Jati, you might know, it's a caste or like you know, it's a group, right? Mm -hmm. The meter specific is the chanda you are using it. Okay, sure, Prabhu. Thank you so much. And a lot of devotees are asking if this is going to be a weekly session. I want to let them know that it's going to be just for today. But however, seeing the overwhelming response, we will request Vijay Prabhu to come back okay. and uh, maybe have a series of sessions. And of course, uh, the GBC SPT has been meditating on bringing such enriching courses um, where registration platforms and trying to enrich our Krishna consciousness in different ways. So uh, is there anything else you would like to add, Vijay Prabhu? Or would you like uh, to? No, just I did not cover some of the topics which I promised to cover. Maybe we can take it in a separate session. Or, uh, sure. or do you think you want to cover them now? Is it elaborate right now? It's it's it may take another fifteen minutes. I think we're okay with fifteen minutes. Uh, we have uh, Sakshi Gopal Prabhu who is joining us from Mayapur and is our tech support. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, all entirely up to you. If you want me to cover, I can cover uh, one more. Slide. We can we can take the next fifteen minutes. Okay, uh, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, we have come to that's level three we completed and then this is level four level four is the advanced one many of you would like to hear about it because some of you would have studied uh, uh, the basics already so this level four is where we are going to talk about the uh, exotic sounds <laughs> so this is called anuswara mm. this is the m with the oops, oops.
So this is Anuswara. It's basically it's M with a dot on the top. Sometimes you might see M with a dot at the bottom. It's nine o'clock. Both are referring to the same thing, right? So the name itself it says Anuswara. Basically, it follows after a vowel. Uh, swara is the vowel, and that which follows after a vowel is Anuswara. Jiva Goswami calls it Vishnu Chakra. So because the wheel that is in the hand of Lord Vishnu, it looks like the dot on this one, right? So that is Vishnu Chakra, he calls. Then you have this Visarga, which is H at the, with the dot at the bottom. Visarga literally means release, release, right? Jiva Goswami calls it Vishnu Sarga. That's, that's the difference, right? Vishnu Sarga. Okay, so how do you pronounce this uh, Anuswara sound, right? Um, so what you have to do is basically from the throat you have to produce a sound just as you were saying for k, g, you have to do the same thing, but you have to send it via your nose. It's going to be like mm, 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 mm. you should not be saying it. Mm, mm. Don't close your lips and then say that. You have to uh, pronounce it through the uh, nose. Mm. Mm, mm. I'm not closing my mouth, uh, lips, you see here. Mm, 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 mm. That's the sound of Anuswara. If I'm saying Nurusimha, you see this Nuru? Uh, Singha. Sorry, say Nuru, Nuru, Singha. This is a nasal sound. Nurusimha. It's not Nurusimha. It is Nurusingha, Nurusingha. That's the Anuswara sound. Okay. Um, these are optional details. If I'll cover if I have time. And this one is uh, Visarga, the way how to pronounce it. It's releasing the air. It is not like H sound, ha, ha. That's not the sound which we saw in the consonants in previously. Uh, this ha, uh, it is different from this one. This is ha. This one is just a release of the air. This is your air, whatever you have, you should be releasing it. So I'm going to show an example. This should tell you how to pronounce that. Let's see. Ah, here you have the first verse of Bhagavad Gita. Samaveta yuyut sava. That when you're saying sava, then you still have some air in your lung. You have to release it. Sava. So you push your stomach. You see, that's your stomach. When I say you, you, sava, sava. When I press that, uh, it pushes out all the air from my uh, from my lungs out. So it becomes you, sava. So Paniniya Shiksha just uh, uh, just says that it has to just release the air. And uh, uh, other Shiksha Shastras, they say it has to be the sound of a hissing of a baby snake. So this is one variant, but you, the common variant of pronunciation or uh, pronouncing this uh, sound, you would say is yuyutsavaha, yuyutsavaha, right? So there also it is not ha, yuyutsavaha, no, yuyutsavaha, ha, ha, that you're releasing the air, rest of the air by echoing the previous vowel. Yuyutsavaha, yuyutsavaha, ha. Huh? That's the previous uh, letter you're you're releasing the air there also, right? Um, um, I will show you uh, some other example as well. Uh, this is one line. So Bhagavad Gita one line. Uh, if I'm not one line one forty two. So one forty two, you have, uh, uh, okay. So you have I before uh, the Visarga. So you have to echo only the last vowel, right? It's I is E is there. You need to just to say, even though this is I together, you just need to echo only the last one, right? Karakai, 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 Karakai. Karakai. So it's not karakai, 
it's kara kai kara kai right that's you're losing the year uh, so similarly every uh, vowel can appear in front of that ha uh. so if it is a uh, you would say rama rama ha rama ha rama ha rama ha rama ha if it is rama ha even there also you have to give a short echo not a long echo you want to say rama ha no because you are just pushing the air out echoing the previous vowel right rama ha rama ha right that's it hari hi hari hi hari hi right so e hi you want e hi same that e hi you won't say like that see e hi e hi u u hu u hu guru hu guru hu u hu u hu u hu same thing when you are adding a visarga the h with the dot after this letter can anyone pronounce these two uh, with a visarga don't worry about it these they don't they don't appear <laughs> the weird sound oh no, it won't appear like that okay so these four things you can ignore is a a hare he hare he as you are echoing that this one we saw that uh, a similar one uh, so um so which is karakai that e only the last uh, uh, letter only you have to echo it and then oh 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 right it's not oh oh it is oh 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 you're pushing your stomach and releasing the air oh oh this oh you you are echo oh oh right so there are so many examples uh, uh, in bhagavad gita though this oh it is no way there in the bhagavad gita but every other uh, thing similarly oh that is also not there but all other sounds are there with visarga in bhagavad gita i can post the examples later uh okay so that's with the visarga and uh, uh, there is uh, when you are reciting if you want to be like a professional you have to uh, one thing you have to keep in your mind where you are giving the pass so if you are giving dharma kshetre kurukshetre samaveta yuyotsavah so this echo is there only at the end uh, if if it is here right? mama ka panda you there is no echo mama ka panda was chai if you say like that it will mess up the meter there is a reason uh, it is not echoed because most of the times when is it is in the middle of the verse it, the sound itself is changed for example this would be mama ka pandavas chaiva this is not mama ka mama ka like a first slight first sound is added right upadmani uh little advanced so uh only at the end of a half of a verse right you have to say that end of a half of a verse not even end of a quarter if it comes here or here you should not be uh, pronouncing echoing it only at this point or this point you should be echoing it um uh that's with that one and i uh, when you're pausing and saying each each word for your audience to repeat after you dharma kshetre guru kshetre you're giving a pause everywhere samaveta you cannot say like that if you're giving a pause you have to undo the sandhi fortunately for us proper has done the job or bbd has done that job so you have to undo this this is sandhi is undone if you see that samaveta that ha is there visarga is there so if you are passing if you are giving a pass if you don't give a pass just read through it if you are giving a pass you have to undo this this samaveta and the same thing goes if you are continuously pronouncing some people will go through and read from word for word these are all sandhis undone in the synonyms so you cannot do like that you cannot say dharma kshetre kuru kshetre samaveta yutsavah mamakah pandavah cha eva you just mess up the whole meter right 
your positive mamakaha pandavash i cannot say pandavah but if i have to say it together to pandavash chaiva but if i give a pass pandavah i have to undo the sandhi same thing anywhere you stop mama kaaf pandavah repeat after me mama kaaf pandavah there i have to undo the sandhi wherever i give a pass i have to undo the sandhi the undone of the sandhi is done here for us in synonyms so you can this is pro tip right and uh, you would see sometimes the a disappearing in uh, uh, in the verses so with a apostrophe mark will be there let's, let's see ah, yeah here is a sha sa shabdas tumulo bhavat so this a uh, has disappeared because of a sandhi uh, uh, so you should not be pronouncing it some people say it some people say sa shabdas tumulo abavat you cannot say like that this a uh, has been removed so you have to say tumulo bhavat unless you are stopping it uh, uh, every word you say tumulaha abhavat you can say like that but if you are saying together tumulo bhavat that a has to be removed right so the a is only removed after o or a there's nowhere else you would see this a has been removed anywhere if you look at right you see this o after o or a this is that a this is removed a removed after a after a a it's removed after o it's removed ye vo byam asya haro vishnu padante that's the sutra of jiva goswami gives after a or o the a is removed right so that's about the uh, a and there is the conjunctions you have you would see kshatriya right so k will be there this k is not silent you should not be saying kshatriya you should pronounce that k kshatriya i'm going to slowly say it uh, exaggerating it so that you understand k kshatriya k kshatriya k kshatriya that k i'm going to reduce it k kshatriya 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 that k sound should be there we don't skip sounds there is nothing like in english you have the Sudo, the P is silent. It's not like that. This J and uh, the N with the tilde, nya, together uh, is also controversial sound. Some people will say gya in North India. You would hear this gyan. You know this gyana. They would say in South India they may say like this gyana, gyana, right? And in the modern scholars uh, they would say gyana, gyana, because in Siksha Sastras there is no separate sound mentioned for this conjunct so you cannot invent so they say you have to say it j nya together jnana whatever works for you jnana nyana jnana whatever works for you you can just uh, use it uh, uh two minutes i have i'm going to give some pro tips very quick uh for anuswara so this anuswara this ma when it appears uh you see this one appears before this set of letters here this this 25 letters right this this first 16 letters if it appears before there if that m with the dot on the top you can change it to this nasal corresponding nasal for example uh, uh you would see that uh, scholars often does that when they recite that uh Okay, here is you dung. I can say you dung. That's the you dung. You dung. Uh, that's the Anuswara pronunciation. Or before the, if you look at the, here is our the. Na is there, so you can change it to na actually. You dhan duryo dhanas tada. I can change it like that. Na, I can change it. So similarly, if it appears before pa, I can change this uh, to ma, ma, ma. Pashyaitam, not mm. This is pashyaitam. Uh, this one is. I'm going to change this one to 
uh, nya. So this would be I would be pronouncing it. Uh, mahatin chamum, mahatin chamum, mahatin chamum. I can say or mahatin chamum, right? So you can change this uh, to any of this. Anunasika. Uh, this is all, these are all called this last letter before these letters appear. Right? This is a pro tip. One more pro tip is uh, that. This is a cool thing. Uh, some people just to show off their expert is they you they do this one before ya va or la. If this one appears, it becomes. Uh, let's see. On this chapter, we don't have, uh, but I'm going to pick up from another chapter, which is Bhagavad Gita. This verse. Okay, so here you have. Atyantikam yat. So it is before appearing before ya. So if it is appearing before ya, I can change this to ya with a chandra bingo on the top, which would be nasal and mouth tone together. Atyantikayat. 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 Right. So the chandra bindu, how you have to pronounce uh, uh, this is the example of the chandra bindu. I showed in the beginning. This here is the Chandra Bindu you have. So there's the L with the da, uh, dash under the bottom. So Shraddhaval. This is not Shraddhaval. Shraddhaval. You have to use both nose and mouth together for Chandra Bindu. Shraddhaval Labhate. Shraddhaval Labhate. Val. Val. Your nose has to vibrate, right? So your mouth also you have to use, not just to nose. Shraddhavan Labhate. Right? So similarly, the same thing we are doing here. This one becomes ya with the chandra on the top. Nye, nye, nye. Instead of saying ya, I'm saying nye. So that's what I'm going to use. Atyantikayat. Atyantikayat. Right? Samvat sara, if it is written. The other letter is va and la. Before va and la, it also changes. Savatsara, uh, Savatsara, Salunati. Uh, instead of saying Samlunati, Samlunati, I'm saying Salunati. Instead of saying Samvatsara, I'm saying Savatsara. So these are pro tips. I'm rushing it through uh, because I'm running out of time. The last pro tip is. Uh, the Visarga, how you pronounce in front of ka, ka, pa, pa, sha, sha, sa. Uh, this pro tip, you don't need to follow. These are optionalities. If you want, you can follow, but uh, you, you can skip also. So the first uh, verse of Bhagavad Gita, you have this example of the Visarga appearing before a pa. So if it appears before pa or pa, Pa, pa or pa, both, it changes to a F sound. So, mama kaf, mama kaf. I'm exaggerating. Mama kaf, mama kaf, pandavas chaiva. So, it would be mama kaf, pandavas chaiva. You have to say like, you, you can say like that. Or you can say regular, mama kaf, pandavas chaiva. Regular release of the ear you can do. Or you can change it. And before, this is called uh, Upadmaniya, and this is Jivamuriya. So before Ka and Ka, you can change it to, in your throat, you can say, uh, before it Ka, it appears like that. Right? So Ramaha Krishnaha, if I have to say, Ramah Krishnaha, Ramah, that's on the throat I'm stopping, Ramah Krishnaha, Ramah Krishnaha, Ram, or I can say, Rama Krishna, Rama Krishna, or Rama Krishna, stopping there in the throat itself. And before Sha Sha Sa, you can change to Sha Sha Sa, same thing. Uh, one example for this one is uh, going to be here. Uh, you would have heard of this one many times. This is the last example I'm giving. So, okay. 
Okay, you see, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. They say like that. So this ha you can optionally say like this. Om Shanti Shanti. You are just pushing the air out, or you can just use the next letter sha here. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. So which would be. Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Many pros they use this. Uh, you would see many places because it's just easy. And if it is a sa, you would be saying Om Shanti sa, Shanti instead of Shanti. You would you would be saying sa, Shanti right sa. So similarly with the sha also. Right? So you can optionally uh, change. Uh, the sound as well. So with this, I will uh, stop the presentation. Thank you very much for everyone for uh, attending this. And uh, um, thank you, Govinda Premataji and the GBC SPT team for organizing this. I'm very happy to uh, have provided this course. Thank you so much, Vijay Prabhu, for your wonderful presentation and taking out your valuable time, sharing all this with us. I know it was, you had to crunch everything up to keep it within that okay. time frame. But Krishna Willing, we'll have you back again and um, do more segment-wise presentation. So if anybody would like more information or has any questions, uh, I request Sakshi Gopal Prabhu to please flash our email address on the screen. Please feel free to email us uh, we're hoping Vijay Prabhu will be willing to share your presentation if uh, some devotees request. Mm -hmm. um, also, thank you so much to all our viewers. We had a lot of attendance. And like I mentioned, this is going to be available for viewing at a later time on our YouTube and Facebook channel. So if you haven't subscribed yet, go ahead and subscribe. And also you can subscribe to the GBC SPT website it's splashing on our screen right now uh that way you'll be updated about all our events so thank you so much thank you so much vijay prabhu thank Thanks you so much, much to all our viewers Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Thank you.